What happens at laser tag never stays at laser tag. Laser. Laser on focus tag talk. Laser on focus tag talk. I feel like you could be like in Ghostbusters or something. Oh my God, you have got some stories. Let's talk about laser tag. Who knew you were a laser tag legend? Time to get laser unfocused. Tag talk with Tivia. Welcome to Laser Unfocused Tag Talk. Hi, I'm Tivia. We've talked with actors who laser tag, singers who laser tag, even lawyers who laser tag. But this is the first time we've gotten to hear from a comedian who laser tags and talks about it when she performs. I am delighted to be joined by comedian Kathy Ferris, who you might recognize from her dry bar comedy special, Stay at Home Superhero, or her debut album, Have You Seen This Woman?, both of which include some humor based on her real life laser tag experience. And so I am delighted to have you with me. Welcome, Kathy. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Well, I am so excited that uh, I discovered your act via a different podcast. And when I heard you talking about laser tag, oh my goodness, it was just so relatable to me and uh, so spot on. So we're going to talk about that. But I'd love to begin by just kind of getting a feel for, you know, a little about you. And maybe you could tell us about yourself and how you ended up going from stay at home superhero to stand up comic. <laughs> um, sure. I'm Kathy Ferris. I'm a Boston based comedian. Uh, I started late in life. I started when I was 44. Um, I always wanted to do comedy. And I, for 19 years, was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then finally, I just decided, yep, I'm going to do it. I took, a, I took a class and I thought I was done with it. And then I just fell in love with it. And I haven't stopped. So I've been doing uh, comedy now for 12 years. And well, that... it's, been, it's been great. Yeah. That's amazing. And uh, and so it really gives you kind of a cool vantage point. And you've got some amazing stories. And I related to quite a few of your stories, actually. Oh, good. But to bring everybody up to speed with your laser tag uh, humor, mm -hmm. uh, is it OK if we play a sample from your album? Sure, let's do it. All right. So this is Kathy Ferris from her album. Have you seen this woman? Now, by this point, you're probably thinking this lady could probably use therapy. I tried therapy. I got better results from just a couple of sessions of laser tag. <laughs> Ever play laser tag? I have never felt that free. I mean, sure, I ruined a nine-year-old's birthday party. But I also worked through some pretty big intimacy issues. And I made the leaderboard three times. Devin sucked. That's not on me, that's on his parents. Why are you celebrating his birthday at a place he clearly struggles? Why don't you give him what he wants? A GameStop gift card and a ride. Right? GameStop is more of like a lifestyle than a popular retail chain. It's like Vegas for virgins. Just packed with poor decision makers that smell. I feel like some of you don't know what a GameStop is. <laughs> Do me a favor. Next time you're dining at a Panda Express, <laughs> go next door. <laughs> you're gonna find Devin with a fistful of gift cards and questioning thoughts about mom's new friend, Frank. <laughs> but you know where you're gonna find me? On the leaderboard, three times. Laser milf, laser milf, laser milf. Now, I've got to tell you, that resonated with me because I have always said I use laser tag in place of going to the gym. And oh. you found that it works in place of therapy. So how did you come to that conclusion? You know, I, I as I said to you in a disclaimer, I've only done laser tag maybe 12 times and I'm really not that good. But it was a memory of mine. That's where I get a lot of my comedy from is just like these small moments and experiences that I've had. And so there was, there was one particular one and it was, uh, there was a birthday going on there, but there was just this kid. And I remember like when I first got in there and I was super excited about it and he was just there with all his kid teeth and just kind of, I don't know, staring me down. It just did something to me. And I just always remembered that feeling and so when I was writing this, I was really channeling that kid. 
So, so really, that's it. But we have done laser tag. In fact, it was something that we did for my husband to kind of detox from Call of Duty um, that he's playing online and he's like he's trying to weed off it. So laser tag was, you know, one of the ways that we did that to uh, to get him, you know, off Call of Duty a little bit. Now, what brought you into a laser tag arena in the first place? How did you get started with that? Uh, I think it was uh, it was that we were just, we had young kids at the time um, and we were just looking for something to do. And it's a great way to like just kind of run off energy. Um, so that was like maybe two or three times we did it when when um, the girls were a little older and uh, we were visiting our daughter in college, which is just for fun. And then a couple of birthday parties. And like, that's really my experience with with laser tag. But I will tell you, I, I have listened to your podcast and I've learned a lot about this. And I don't know, I might get my own team together. I might start, I might join a league. This might be something that I'm real good at. I love that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm coming out to Boston. We'll play together. Okay, great. <laughs> Let's do it. So. Get some mother like energy out. You know what I mean? Aggression. You know, there is such an energy to going into an arena and, you know, it it's truly something that anybody can do at any age. But I find, you know, going in and having these experiences, I mean, you know, not uh, maybe not necessarily uh, what you were explaining with the birthday parties, but you just find different energies and you find, um, you know, all this uh, kind of release, whether it's the exercise and the endorphins uh -huh. or whatnot. I mean, when you were saying, hey, you're working through some stuff, I can totally relate to that because, you know, when you're having a rough day, you go into the arena, it can change everything. Really, can it? Like, can it, like you're going in, are you, do, you, do you play better when you're mad or like when, like, you know, when you're in a good mood? Like, do you? I play faster when I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> does that, does that count? Like, is it better to be fast? Whatever gets on the leaderboard, right? Oh, I guess. So. Okay. Okay. I like it. I Do like you remember it. where you played your laser tag? Uh, um, One was like a legit place. It was in Vermont. Um, in, um, I don't know if it was Burlington, but very close to Burlington, Vermont. And it was like in a warehouse kind of kind of thing. That was probably as legit as we got. The rest of them were like at Fun Town and you know places like that. Um, so it was it was very much like we're sitting on a bench with a uh, with other nine year olds. You know what I mean? And um, and that was that was the experience. And that really was what I was channeling in this joke. You know. Absolutely. And um, so it, it's kind of interesting to see where you got the inspiration and that, you know, you, your comedy really is stemming from your real life experience there. And any other memories about that time? About uh, about laser tag? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, the other thing when you when when you write a joke too, like this is the edited version of a joke, there was like a lot of other pieces of it that like I would love to kind of bring into it like taking out half a boy scout troop you know having like you know like the thing that I don't know if you have this but you know some kind of mantra or like chant that you have which is like kid tested mother approved you know that kind of thing going on uh the other big memory for me was the, the sweat the swag that kids had for their birthday parties you know when we came out I did take one of them um, but nobody was really was watching that table. So lesson learned for them, but like had all the gift bags and stuff. Not only do they get to like do laser tag and they get cake, you know, they get, they get merch and stuff too. Um, that was impressive. Any facility that's having a birthday party there really ought to be making sure every one of those kids walks away at the very least with a buy one, get one certificate because every one go. of those kids is going to have a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. I like this whole leaderboard thing, too. I think, you know, n there's one thing about bullying, but let's put a visual of it. You know, like, let's really just lean into this thing. Right? Like, especially for this age, that's tough. And that's why I wrote about the fact that that it was this kid's birthday. Um, I don't know if it was my kid's, that, that kid that I wrote about's birthday, but I'm pretty sure it was like some kind of special day for him, you know. And you just went in and you were a birthday basher. 
But you, you know, the thing <laughs> is that I didn't realize like how, like, and this is so true, you know, I went in and I'm like, okay, my kids are here. We got to do this thing. But then once I walked through that door and it started, I was, I was in it, you know what I mean? And then, and he was the first person I saw. And I was like, oh, it just kind of took me out of it for a minute. And I was like, this kid's not ruining my experience. I'll tell you, I related to that because I so distinctly remember, I can even tell you, I was in Kansas at an arena when this happened. I remember some kid following me around, calling me Karen the entire game. <laughs> really? But That's the awful. Leaderboard says, says all that needs to be. I mean, I would not have turned around on that kid, but he started it. <laughs> Did you turn around on him? He called me Karen multiple okay. times. Right. It was like, who's asking for it? <laughs> but most of the time, I mean, you go into the arenas and I don't care if they're you know, young kids, whatnot. We have a good time. In fact, I really enjoy the experiences, especially if I see a party group and there's little girls, especially. I really love to, you know, just be able to kind of coach them, steer them in the right direction, show them, oh, hey, I you know, the, boy, the base is over here. This is what you want to do. Let me show you. And, you know, love to see, especially if it's the kid's sister want to see them really get up there oh, on the board. Oh, yeah. I so. like that. I like that strategy. I like it. Do you yeah, go in so and when you see like a sea of kids being like, okay, everyone's going to learn a lesson today. Like, <laughs> You know what? There is a kids. certain, there's a certain uh, group that you see really come after you. And I feel like, you know, that 11, 12 year old, 13 year old boy who uh, definitely, you know, is coming your way. I, mm -hmm. I feel like that's, okay if they start it but the little but I, I say I have a three foot rule three foot around you gotta help oh, them well, that's fair that's fair yeah uh, I, I like some, that some of these kids like to do the trash talk and they look at you know women like us we don't look like we're going to mm -hmm. be competitive but hey right. you just don't know yeah you don't know we took some Advil we stretched we're ready for this you know there, there you go absolutely I now, like that you talked about this a little bit in your act, but I'm just going to ask you about your code name. What did you actually use for your code name? <laughs> so my code name is Laser Mill, um, and it was it was a really hard one to write into the bit because I'm a pretty clean comedian, and uh, and my writing partner was like, "What do you think about this?" And I was like, uh, no, nah. it took me like about two months to actually put it in the joke. I actually wrote around it. And finally, I was just like, nope, I'm going to do it. And it, it had been my closer for a very long time um, because it did it hit really hard um, for people. And like you said, I think any kind of time it's a joke that people can relate to, but they could also visualize. So like they're right there with you at laser town. You know what I mean? They know this kid that I'm talking about, you know? Um, and then you give them that kind of surprise. It, it's, it's just, it's, it's just sets itself up. It checks off all the boxes. Um, so my writing partner, Gary Peterson, he's the one who came up with that one. Um, and so I got to credit him on that. So yeah. was that actually a code name you used or just something you came up with for your act? No, that was part of writing. That was just part of, yeah, part of writing. I forget what my code name was um, when I played with the girls. Um, I don't know what it was. A lot of arenas, I don't think, would let you get away with that. Oh, really? So I wondered what your real code name might have been or if you played oh. in an arena where you didn't need one sometimes that happens oh what's the best name you've seen oh the best name i've seen well let's see um i played arena with one guy who just uses a bunch of characters for his name instead of letters oh uh, i'm trying to think now well you put me on the spot and there there have been a lot of good ones but i mean you, a lot of times people will come across with you know names like um like Punisher or oh my gosh I can't even think of a code name right now <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, sure we'll, we'll shout out some real people we'll shout out Lil Bit great woman I play with uh at uh, an arena in central New York and Lil Bit there's her code name Lil so. Bit yeah that's a cute name I like that I like that that's not that's good right 
like or like they could just be like declarative statements like i hate math you know what i mean like oh yes and we've had those oh gosh um uh, uh, and uh hate on evil or something evil used to use that oh, one okay uh i play on a team with guys named scuba and slayer and um uh they are all going to kill me for not being able to I know someone will call it like, what about mine? mine was Shadow great. Dragon. Mine was great too. Havoc. Some, and then okay. Havoc with a K on the other team. Uh, <laughs> you have this on YouTube. Some people can just put them on the comments uh, too. Absolutely. I'm always looking for inspiration for, you know, new names, you know? Yep. So there's a lot of good ones out there. And, yeah. and um, Tivia is mine. People okay, even what's at the my home arena that? don't even know my real name. They just call me Tivia. So I roll with that. What's the backstory of that? Uh, the backstory to that is when I was six or seven, there was a TV show that was uh, themed around Photon, which was the original laser tag game. And the TV okay. show was Photon. And so it, uh, it kind of took the storyline out of the laser tag arena and the best players from each planet became like the real fighting team in space. And so the token female character was named Tivia, but she was a badass. And I just remembered that from when I was a kid. And I said, you know, when I walked into my first laser tag arena, I'm going to adopt that name. And that's how I became Tivia. I bet nobody else had that. Ironically, the very first arena I tried that in, I couldn't get that code name. So I had to be Tivia too. <laughs> oh, because they had another one? They must have, or whatever reason, it wouldn't, it, the system kicked it back. So the very first time I was Tivia 2, each mm -hmm. arena that I sign up in, for the most part, nobody takes it. If they do, Tivia chick. I've got variations. So what happens if people have the same code name? Do they have like to fight to the death or something? Like what happens? <laughs> Hardly ever does it come to the death. <laughs> <laughs> no, but a system might kick back. Uh, a name if more than one person has used it or they might not it all depends I mean oh. sometimes you've got people like you who've gone maybe a dozen times in total and maybe it doesn't matter because you're not returning every week and then for somebody like me it just becomes you know part of who you are well yeah because you have stats and stuff right like oh absolutely again so that leaderboard that matters I, <laughs> to some degree yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, mean, I will tell you like that is the thing that people people do respond to um, but I am curious about that. So like, do you have a backup name? So if you can't use Tivia, what's your Oh, yes. I have Tivia. I have Tivia Chick. I have Tiv Was Here. I have <laughs> Tiv Travels. <laughs> oh, um, I like once that. Once I even had Tivia in Hawaii. Oh. Because <laughs> I figured okay. I had to commemorate that one. <laughs> oh, because you were in Hawaii? You weren't manifesting something? This is like... Right. No, no, I was in Hawaii when I bought a membership at the Hawaiian Arena. And yeah, so I've got oh. a, uh, a, uh, a membership card for an arena that's no longer there. But <laughs> did you go yeah. for laser tag? Did you go to Hawaii for laser tag? Oh my gosh, yes. I have played laser tag oh. in all 50 states twice. What? Yeah. So Is laser that tag. On LinkedIn? <laughs> believe it or not that's not my real job this is just a crazy hobby that i adopted and i no, thought well, I, I, to say that but I it's a very that. interesting icebreaker you know what i mean i bet not a lot of people can say that you know i'm pretty sure i'm still the only person who can say that definitely for uh, wow. the circling it twice but yeah so i i've had some amazing travels because of laser tag and and so that has kind of opened up my wanting to hear other people's stories and find out more about you know what brings what brings somebody to laser tag and a lot of times you know it might be a family experience like what you were talking about and so mm -hmm. i i find it really kind of cool especially um you know as you're still talking about this i know you you're your children are grown now, mm -hmm. but um, have you been in a laser tag arena since? You, you said one of your daughters was in college. So uh, how recently yeah, have you yeah, played laser tag? Yeah, I was tag? in one for my nephews. Like I didn't go into it, but like I sat out, I sat out and, and watched him. Was it his but, birthday? Um, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was one of their birthdays. Yeah. So but you I didn't want to be cool that lady place. on his birthday. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty cool place. Um, awesome. but no, I haven't. And now I'm thinking about it. You know, when I was getting ready for this, I was talking to my husband about who would love to do it. Um, he, he prides himself on doing this kind of stuff. And the last time we were 
uh, add one. We couldn't leave until he did make the leaderboard. And so that was a very long day. Um, but yeah, but maybe we'll go back and do it now. I don't know. Like, I, I love that you have this, this thing. That's, that's the thing that interests me the most about, I think, you know, uh, all of us that we embrace who we are. That's what comedy has really helped me do is, you know, instead of all those things that I was, oh, I try to hide that or, you know, maybe not let people know this or that. Um, it all goes into the comedy now, you know, um, and as much as I seem like this kid and and being like that, like I uh, a lot of it is self-deprecating. I think that's where a lot of humor can be safe, you know, um, and that I'm very in touch with my my flaws. <laughs> as a person. <laughs> well, I totally took that joke as being tongue in cheek, but yeah. I really loved kind of hearing about some of the other uh, real life aspects of your life that entered into your comedy. And so tell me about some of the other real things that inspire your act. Um, well, it, I have that album out and I will say that like, there's a little, there's nuggets of real truth in all of it. And it all comes in, into, into my stuff. Um, uh that i'm trying to think about with the album what i have on there um oh when i talk about um uh role playing with my husband and driving driving is a big stressor like that's the thing that is going to keep us out of heaven we're just uh, you know <laughs> i talk about that uh, we're going to be in purgatory about this and about role playing and the big part about you know um that he role plays that you know, he plays this ill-equipped inpatient landscaper and I play the entire effing crew. Um, that is exact. That is my Saturday every fall. Um, so those kinds of things are, are all, all a part of, all a part of that. Um, I, I have a new, new material now because my oldest daughter is, um, just got married. And so I talk about her engagement and, um, compared to my friend's um, daughter who got engaged too. And it's like this $50,000 wedding on Nantucket on the island, nine piece band. Well, my daughter um, it met her fiance in a, a lesbian Dungeons and Dragon online discord group. Um, so- Well, there's something you don't hear every day. Right. So this is probably gonna be done in the forest, you know, for like 3,500 bucks. <laughs> um, we're gonna like we're gonna hire this guy um in tight who plays a flute. He's like the Mick Jagger of the Middle Earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like it just uh, those kinds of things that are in that are that are real in my life, um, that are in there. Now granted, my family has to sign off on it first. Like, can I talk about can I talk about this? And uh a hundred percent of the time, like, yeah, absolutely. So so all of it. There's little nuggets of all of that. If you listened, to, you know, when I did the album, one of my daughter's friends was like, yeah, uh, is any of this true? And like, it's all true. <laughs> like there's like when you pop pilot, like granted as a comedian, you, you structure it differently. Um, so it lands better, but yeah, for the most part. Well, yeah. certainly two big things that have happened in your comedy career are the debut album, mm -hmm. uh, but also your Dry Bar Comedy special. Can you tell me a little about that? I listen to a lot of Dry Bar Comedy, and so oh, I would do. love to. Oh, yeah. And so I'd love to kind of hear how you got the opportunity to do that and what that experience was like. Yeah, that was that was an amazing experience. And I got it um, during the pandemic, actually. Um, and they were, you know, it, dry bar is clean comedy, um, that can be done and it, it, it is taped in, uh, Provo, Utah, um, and, home of laser assault. We got to give them a shout out for their arena out there. Okay. There we go. <laughs> shout out. Um, and it is, it, well, when we taped, they're like, it's a family thing. Anybody can come to this, uh, come to this show. Um, and it's, it's amazing. It, it's a wonderful stream of, um, and very popular, um, and very successful in terms of doing clean comedy throughout the nation, throughout the country. Um, and so getting that was fantastic. I, I really only had two and a half weeks notice to do it, um, and felt very fortunate that I had, you know, enough stuff and clean stuff 
most of my stuff is clean anyway, um, to, to do it. But dry, dry bar is clean, clean. Um, like laser milf is not in there. Uh, I talk about laser tag in there. The, the joke had to be edited. Um, many of my things had to be a little edited to be squeaky clean. Um, but it, it was, it was an awesome experience and a wonderful experience to actually have to bring my comedy through that. Yeah. I'm glad that you listen to dry bar. I love dry bar. They get my yeah, five ninety nine every month. <laughs> me too. I was a fan of it too. And it was like, it was, um, it was amazing to get that milestone. Yeah. I've always wanted to do a, a dry bar. Well, that's terrific. Yeah. Do you have any advice for up and coming comedians? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I guess, you know, if you're wanting to do it, um, you should definitely try it. it. You know, there is, I'm somebody very much of process and formula and, um, and there is a way to learn about joke writing. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's not just something that you have to be, you know, um, the life of the party or, or the class clown. Mo many comedians are not. Um, many of us are kind of introverted um, and, and shy. And so, um, so it really is something for anybody. In fact, I would say the life of the party kind of person has a more difficult part, time doing comedy than somebody who just really loves comedy and they love the, you know, like um, certain people or the beats of something or experiences or any of that. I just say, try it, just go for it and try it. And the best way to do that is either take a class and there's so many classes online now too. So if it's something that doesn't fit into your life or you just too nervous to do it, um, then do that. And I was one of those people, like it was really, I was terrified to do it. Um, and I continued to be terrified for like the first year I was doing it, but I also loved it. Um, so just taking a class or going to an open mic and many, many places have open mics. You can just go to Facebook um, and just type in that where you live and open mic and it should bring up, bring you up some information about it. So that's what I'd say. The first step is either take a class or go to an open mic, but just try it. Very good advice for comedians. Do you have any advice for laser tag birthday kids? Other than getting good. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't call them Karen. Um, <laughs> you know, just remember that it's about celebrating you that day and you don't have to win. You're already a winner because it's your special day. So if you do see middle aged women there and maybe they're having a tough time, why don't you just give them the W? You know what I mean? Just let them go what they're doing. <laughs> That's All the best right. I got. <laughs> That'll work for the kids. Now, one other thing I'd love to ask you about. Could you explain Go Cork Yourself? Oh, I would love to. So this is you have laser tag. What I have is that I like to take my unused art degree and I recycle wine corks by painting portraits of people on them. Um, for instance, I will actually have some right here. For instance, these are, I don't know if you're familiar with TLC's hit show Sister Wives, but these are the stars of TLC's hit show Sister Wives. This is Cody and all four of his wives. Um, and I like to just paint portraits of people on wine corks. Um, and I've been doing it for like seven years and I talk about it. I talk about it in my set. This is Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, and uh and I'm going to talk about it more in my set too, because I just, it's just different and I like to do it. And um, I just kind of want to lean into it. So I like to do it. You know, everybody has a different kind of medium for their art. Um, and that's mine. I make keychains out of them. I love this. Yeah. And yeah, go to gocorkyourself.com. I have that domain. It's my, it's my comedy schedule right now, but it does have some of my corks up there. Um, and I'm on TikTok and Instagram. Go cook yourself. Well, as I said in the beginning, your comedy was inspiring to me on more than one level because obviously I uh, you know, resonated really hard with the laser tag humor. Um, but then I loved that you're somebody who's like a go hard scrapbooker. 
Mm -hmm. And then when I saw online some of these corks, you really inspired me. And so as I thank you for joining me today, I'm going to be sending you this. I thought it would be rather fitting to make you a cork Kathy laser tag. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So cork Kathy is coming your way for your collection. <laughs> I'm impressed. Oh, well, thank you so much. You got the hair dead on. I did my best. It was my first time doing that. First time all the way around. I love that. it. But I've got to share one other thing with you, just because I felt like I would be a little extra with this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share the screen and we'll put this in the blog. But uh, share with you, here's Cork Kathy, but here's glow in the dark Cork Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I then, love it. I love it. Of course, you can't laser tag by yourself. So... I made one for my shelf so Cork Kathy could play tag against Cork Tivia. Um, you need <laughs> to send me a picture of these so we can promote this podcast. I, I will happily send you pictures of that. And um, I, I just love that. And I, I love everything that you've had to share about your comedy. Let me ask you, is there anything else that you would like to talk about? Um. No, I didn't even think about it, really. I think I think we've covered the major p points. I mean, I guess we could talk about cl climate change but or global warming, but I think corks and laser tag are really, like, top of the list. Well, I wholeheartedly <laughs> agree. And I always like to end with a little rapid-fire tag talk with some quick questions to you okay. for quick answers back. Are you game for that? Yeah. All right. Rapid-fire with Kathy Ferris. Let's start with best place you've ever gone to play laser tag. Oh, that would be Burlington, Vermont, in that warehouse, for sure. I think I know which one you mean. Best memory from a laser tag experience, any kind of memory. Um, okay, this one was at a birthday party, but not somebody that we knew. And um, they did leave cake, so we got the cake. <laughs> also, we did quite well. We did quite well. Hey, I would have stopped at the cake. <laughs> which leads us to favorite snack at the concession stand oh uh that's good um i'm gonna have to go reese's peanut butter cups okay anything with peanut butter that's a good answer favorite brand of we never run in the arena shoes what do you mean by that what's well you're never supposed to run in the arena so basically that's my funny way of saying what's your favorite brand of running shoes oh my favorite <laughs> brand of running shoes um adidas Okay. And best place to go to find more of your comedy? Oh, kathyferris.com. Very good. Kathy with an E, Ferris with an A. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Kathy. I appreciate you joining me. That yeah. is my guest, comedian Kathy Ferris. Check out her humor. And uh, thank you for being a fellow laser tag lover. Thanks for having me. Thanks for checking out this episode of Laser Unfocused Tag Talk. Listen for more episodes on the first and third Friday of each month. Want to be a guest on an upcoming episode? Find out more and follow my blog and website at tibiachickloveslasertag.com.